Good afternoon, everybody. We are coming to you live for a little Lunch and Learn on Friday. What do you have to eat today, Brooke? I got nothing. <laughs> someone was going to mention poop. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I'm excited to be here today to, to do a little learning over lunch. And my name is Roger Morgan. I'm the founder and CEO of Pawtree. And with me is Brooke Sloat, our Director of Product Development. And Mighty, we have an interesting topic today. This is what I think all of us, uh, uh, you know, three initials that we have all heard over and over and over, I'm sure, um, uh, even if it's with respect to human, you know, products or, you know, potentially pet products, but the, the three initials CBD, and it's a hot topic. We've seen it uh, out there. There's a lot uh, it's a little bit of a wild west. It, sometimes it can feel like in CBD. Um, lots to to learn. Lots to you know question, and uh, and lots of potential you know impact in terms of a in a positive way. Um, <clears throat> CBD for for health. And so today we are going to talk about it. We're going to tackle CBD. And I think by the the end of this short little lunch and learn, uh, I think all of us will be empowered with more knowledge, more information, and feel better as pet parents to make some informed decisions. That's my my hope and my belief. So with that, Brooke, why don't we dive in? I know it's been a buzzword, you know, in the human pet, uh, in, in the human space for a while, um, and the pet space. What is CBD and how can it help our pets? Okay. So um, I am going to try and simplify this for us, but this topic, the CBD topic can be very confusing because there are lots of new terms that many of us just haven't heard before. So it may take a few times uh, about hearing about CBD before you completely understand it. And I just wanna mention that because I don't want anyone to feel bad about that. This is confusing. OK, and, you know, some of these words, it's going to get a little scientific here for a moment. But I assure you, you're going to feel much more comfortable after after this this chat. So simply put, CBD is the abbreviation for the word cannabidiol, cannabidiol. OK, but because cannabidiol is a little bit harder to say, we're just going to refer to it as just CBD. OK, and CBD is a cannabinoid. And it's one of many phytocannabinoids, which are, you can call it cannabinoids or cannabinoids. So you'll hear me switching that back and forth um, sometimes. But um, phytocannabinoids are cannabinoids that are found in plants. Plants are phyto. Okay, so phytocannabinoids. So CBD is a cannabinoid and it's uh, also a phytocannabinoid that's found in plants. Okay. Phytocannabinoids are simply compounds that are found in the cannabis sativa plant, which is where hemp comes from. Um, in our case, we're talking about the hemp plant and scientists have identified over 150 of these compounds found in hemp oil. CBD is just one of them. Okay, so for perspective, some other phytocannabinoids that you'll find in the plant would be CBG and CBN and CBC and CBDA, and we mentioned CBD, and something called THC cannabinoids as well, okay? But there are, as I said, over 150 of them, so I'm not gonna sit and, and name them all, but I just, you know, our focus is on CBD. Our focus will also be, um, we're gonna also talk about THC, okay? okay. Um, Different cannabinoids help with different issues. And we're, we'll mainly talk about CBD, which is one of the largest cannabinoids found in the hemp plant, meaning that there's more CBD than any other uh, molecule, cannabinoid molecule that's found in the, the uh, hemp plant. And I know what we're going to get into, you know, you'll, you'll share with us some of the, uh, the, the reasons why and the ways to kind of cut through the clutter of all the different things that people are saying about CBD and help us, you know, empower us to, to, to make, you know, good decisions and kind of know what to look for and what questions to ask. But before we dive into all that, what are just to help some of us who maybe don't know, we've heard of CBD, but we're not, you know, we're not uh, maybe consumers uh, or, or, or you know, educated in that topic. What are some of the health benefits of CBD? 
Okay, so um, so CBD is touted for many health benefits. And for our pets, so I'm going to focus on our pets. Um, these benefits are helping to relieve anxiety. So for our pets, that would mean, you know, if they have separation anxiety, when you when you leave them um, at home alone um, and they chew on your furniture, or destroy your pillows, yeah. they have anxiety mm -hmm. from storms or fear of fireworks, they get motion sickness from travel, um, they get anxious. Uh, around when going to the to the vet or the groomer or when boarded or around strangers like you know workers in your home or friends that aren't over often or parties that you might have so that's an example yeah. um, CBD also helps <clears throat> to relieve aches and discomfort or soreness from everyday activities so playing at the dog park going for a long walk or hike jumping on or off furniture just playing around in the house or outside in the yard um, Helping with age-related mobility issues would be another. Okay. Uh, supporting um, a normal inflammatory response, supporting a healthy gut and a healthy immune system. So those are so those are the key things that okay. I would say we would focus on for CBD with our pets. It's interesting because those are the key things, but there were, there were a lot of things. So it is it is you can see why it's a topic that you know that people are really excited about. Mm -hmm. and we kind of you know charged up about when you think about all the ways CBD can help our body systems. Again, we're focused on pets, but um, but also can be a little scary because you know that there's uh, some 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 bad actors and some you know some maybe some things that uh, we're not sure you know are are, are true or not um, out there. And so uh, we'll, we'll hopefully answer those things today. At least give people a lot more com confidence. But um, so that's good. I think as a as a kind of a level setting to help us know what what is it that this is going to help with, you know, what does CBD help with? Um, now, maybe just, I know we're not going to take a science class here today, but um, maybe you could give a, just a high level <laughs> of how does CBD work? Okay. Um, so all mammals, all mammals that have a vertebrae, okay? So humans and dogs and cats, we all have this internal system that self-regulates overall balance or homeostasis in the body so that the body functions at an optimal level. This internal system is called the endocannabinoid system and it reacts in response to environmental changes, okay? So again, it's all about balance, all right? So an easy example of this balance is it's hot outside and your internal temperature rises and your body needs, wants to bring that temperature down. So we as humans, we sweat, which lowers our temperature and it brings our body back in balance. If I'm being very simplistic here, if that's the only thing that's out of balance and usually it's way more than that, but that's just a simple example that you can think about, right? Now for a dog, they don't really sweat like we do. So instead they pant to bring their bodies back in balance with regard to bringing their temperatures down. and coming, bringing your bodies back in balance. Um, the term for it is maintaining homeostasis. Okay. okay. Now, the body uses cannabinoids to maintain homeostasis and our bodies, as well as our dogs and cats bodies, naturally produce cannabinoids for use in the endocannabinoid system. Okay. And that's the, again, the internal system that self-regulates overall balance or homeostasis, right? In our bodies. Um, but if our if our bodies don't produce enough of these cannabinoids, um, causing our bodies to be deficient in cannabinoids or we don't have sufficient cannabinoids, that can lead to disease or dis-ease. Uh, ultimately, not you, know, you don't have homeostasis, right? So what scientists have found, which is really interesting, is that phytocannabinoids, so the cannabinoids from plants, not the ones that we make, right? Phy phytocannabinoids like CBD found in the hemp plant have a similar chemical structure to the body's endocannabinoids, which is what we produce or dogs or cats produce naturally. Right. And right. they're able to influence many of the body's systems for maintaining health and homeostasis. So because the chemical structure is similar, it's able to bond or connect with the body's receptors called CB1 and CB2, and I'm not gonna get into what those are exactly, but what that is, you know, think of it like this. Um, think of it like a key. If you don't have the right key for the right lock, the lock won't turn. These uh, phytocannabinoids from the hemp plant 
um, these are the right keys for these receptor locks. So, so they work as well as the, the cannabinoids that we make ourselves, um, but we're able to supplement, if you will, from uh, the hemp plant. Yeah, naturally yeah. occurring hemp plant in, in, in nature, but in a way that it connects to our body system. It's a fascinating, I mean, it really is fascinating. And, you know, I know that this is a, a topic that, uh, that that many have been on the forefront for several years. And um, and we'll get into, you know, kind of the, the legalities uh, yeah. shortly, because I think it's important for people to know. But, um, but one other question on, I guess, kind of, I don't know if it's really science, but uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just kind of understand the the context here of how it works. I've heard a term uh, used before called the entourage effect. Yeah. What, what does that mean? Okay. Um, so to understand the entourage effect, we need to understand the primary forms that CBD comes in. Okay. And then I'll, I'll explain that. So, so first there's something called isolate and isolate contains only CBD compounds, no other cannabinoids and no THC. Okay. Um, there's broad spectrum hemp oil, which is what we use in our supplements. And broad spectrum means that it contains a wide range of phytocannabinoids, including CBG, CBC, CBN, the CBD, plus many others, right, that I told you about. There's over 150 of these compounds in, in hemp wow. oil. Right? Okay. And broad spectrum hemp oil also includes um, other compounds derived from the hemp plant. Um, these examples of these are terpenes and flavonoids. And again, I'm, I'm, I will do a much deeper dive, you know, at a later date. I just want you guys to just understand the basics. Um, but broad spectrum hemp oil does not contain any THC. Okay. So you've got isolate, only CBD, broad spectrum hemp oil, which contains many of the molecules of, 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 of cannabinoids, including CBD, but zero THC. And then there's something called full spectrum hemp oil. And this has all the major phytocannabinoids that we talked about, like broad spectrum does, yeah. but they also, full spectrum contains uh, THC. It does contain THC um, at no more than the federally legal limit of 0.3%, but it does have that compound in it. And, and so, that THC is, uh, well, I, I'll, I'll get to that. I, I didn't, go ahead. I didn't want to interrupt. Well, just, let me just finish up on, so the entourage effect. Okay. Yeah. Now, you know, the three ways that you can get CBD. Okay. Yep. Um, the entourage effect is the term that's used to explain the benefit of, of why the therapeutic impact of the whole plant is greater than any of its component parts acting independently. So you're getting all the phytocannabinoids and the terpenes and the flavonoids. You're getting the impact of the whole plant, not just the CBD. And, and that's really, really meaningful. Gotcha. Okay. That is, that is huge. That really does make a lot of sense. And you can see why the, the term when people say, oh, I have a CBD product, it could mean one of a hundred things. And it really, you know, this is a perfect example. I know we sometimes talk about with pet food that you know, beef isn't beef isn't beef and chicken isn't chicken isn't chicken. You know, you can get a filet mignon or you can get ground, you know, uh, ground, you know, hamburger yeah. and mm -hmm. the quality is different. And it's kind of like this with CBD and maybe even more so because of everything you just explained. It really is. Um, it, it's not one size fits all. And when somebody says I have a CBD product, that doesn't mean it's the same as a different CBD product. Uh, I do want to just take a quick um a little bit of a deep dive on three initials you said a, a few times, which is THC. I think this is really important for people to understand what does that do and, you know, do you want THC or you don't want THC when you're talking about products for your pets? Okay. Uh, great question. And this, this is also very confusing. So THC stands for tetrahydrocannabinol, tetrahydrocannabinol. We will never say that word again. It's THC. That's what everybody refers to it as. Okay. THC are also, or is also a cannabinoid. Uh, but THC produces a different reaction in the body. Um, it gives a psychoactive effect. It's the stuff that makes you high. Uh, it's the stuff that's found in high amounts um, in marijuana. Marijuana can have five to 35% uh, THC content. 
THC is not found in broad spectrum hemp oil, which is what we use. Okay. Um, and that's what you should use with your pets because it will not make them high. There is THC in the full spectrum hemp oil. We would not recommend you using that for, for your pets. Okay. We do not want any THC. We want not even the legal limit of 0.3%. We want 0%. Okay. Wonderful. That I think that's huge to know, and um, and honestly, I, I I do appreciate. I'm looking at some of these comments, and I appreciate. I know everybody does how how uh, you're simplifying this to help. I know you've spent a lot of time researching and studying and learning all of these you know, with lots of wonderful uh, support from you know very technical people, and uh, and you're really helping simplify this for us. So thank you. This is this is really. Wonderful. I think this is a great session for anybody who's considering CBD for pets. Um, so, okay. So CBD, if I kind of summarize, CBD helps the body maintain homeostasis or balance. You talked about keeping things in balance. And so now can we kind of drill in a little bit on how does that, how does keeping the, the body in balance help our pets? Okay. So um, you're, you'll notice that um, I don't mention anything, any disease names, right? So um, I kind of mentioned things that we can talk about. We cannot talk about anything to do with diseases, okay? Um, but we we can talk in, in other terms. So if you're wondering, well, why is she, you know, mentioning this or in a roundabout way? Anyway, it's, it's just because it's how we're able to communicate um, according to the FDA. So when our pets don't have a normal inflammatory response in their joints, that can result in joint issues for our pets, right? Uh, if they don't have a normal inflammatory response in their muscles, that can result in soreness or achiness or discomfort, like after a long walk. Uh, when they don't have a normal inflammatory response in their brain, that can result in anxiety. And CBD can help with all of, of these issues, okay? So we just introduced three new supplements for Pawtree. We have our joint support. I have them here. Give me a second. We have our joint support CBD. We have our aches away CBD. So joint support would be for, for issues with our, you know, with joint health. Aches away would be for, you know, i jumped off the couch wrong. It's a once, you know, it's not an all the time thing, but it's something you want to have in your arsenal um, in case, because that could be a very expensive trip to the vet hospital if you can't, you know, get them to feel a little bit better. And we have our Chillax CBD. Um, so, and that's for anxiety issues. Okay. So those are the three products that, that we've just recently introduced. And uh, we even have um, our, Chillax to the max. Oh goodness. Hang on. Let's see if I have one here. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We even have our Chillax to the max uh, CBD bone. And this oh. is really, really cool. This bone, you know, the, these products work fabulously, right? Okay. But um, this bone is very interesting because when they are upset, okay, um, and they are anxious, or they are home alone, whatever it is. What we say is, you know, when they're stressed out, throw them a bone, the Chillax to the Max bone, because this bone is coated with CBD and actually a mint uh, flavoring to it. And they can chew on this instead of chewing on your furniture and chewing on your, your, you know, your walls and your doors and things like that. Okay, so this is a really nice thing to also throw in the mix to keep them occupied. Okay, so. So those are the items that we have for um, that, that we just recently introduced. And think of these supplements with the added CBD as supercharged. They're going to take your pet's health to the next level because you're getting the CBD in addition to the other active ingredients that are going to help your pet's condition. So it, that's, that's really, really big because we're not giving you a tincture of CBD. We're not just giving you oil and saying, add it. We're giving you the oil that does, you know, certain things, you know, in the, in the chew. We're also giving you, you know, glucosamine and chondroitin and MSM. We're giving you so many different things to attack things in a multimodal level 
and make sure your pet is feeling their best. It's wonderful. I can tell you, I mean, we, we literally, let's see, today is Friday. It was a week ago today that we launched these yeah. new products, these CBD products, mm. and it's been an overwhelming response. Uh, the number of people who have uh, been excited about trying these and have, have ordered them. And, um, and it really is, you know, it's, uh, it's when you have a pet that has one of these needs that you've talked about, Brooke, as we all probably can relate to, um, you just want to help them and you just want to do anything you can to, you know, to ease their, their, you know, either their worries, their stress or anxiety or their pain or discomfort that they're in. And um, these are wonderful I can, uh, you know, not only speak from my own personal experience, but uh, it's been wonderful to see the response. I think we've really got something here that is that it, it, you know it's it's trending, uh, not trendy, but it's trending, and it's very um, and for good reason, and you know, for, in terms of its efficacy. It yeah, it works. <laughs> it works. Um, I do want to go back though for a moment uh, to you know we talked about um, all CBD is not the same. Right, and we're never one. Whether it's with our products, with our our food, or our, our, our treats, or our nutritional supplements, we don't. You know, we never bash any other brand. Um, there's a lot of you know great companies out there trying to do the right thing, and most of them probably do the right thing, and some uh, maybe intentionally or unintentionally don't do the right thing. But there, when it comes to CBD, there really is a massive um, range of what you might get when you think you're getting CBD. And I think it's important to empower pet parents to know what to look for and how they can do their best to assess that for themselves so that they're, they're actually getting, uh, you know, what they think they're getting and, and uh, doing what they think they're doing for their pets. So can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, how our CBD is, is different, why we're so confident with our CBD, uh, you know, versus um, some other, uh, you know, other things that you may find on the market. Absolutely. This is really, really important. Okay. Um, so as, as Roger said, not all CBD is the same. And in sourcing CBD, we found that the CBD that we were receiving in wasn't testing at the low THC level that we required. Remember, we said we want 0%, 0.0%, not even the 0.3. Okay. And there was actually a recent study done and only 18 um, out of 29 CBD products that are in the market that were tested were actually labeled appropriately. So what that means is 11 of these products were much higher in, in THC and THC is not good for your pets. It's actually toxic for them, you guys. So you really, really need to be careful about that. That's why broad spectrum or isolate would be your better choices. Absolutely not full spectrum, uh, which contains THC. Okay, so what we learned is that um, this higher THC can be the result of cross-pollination between, between marijuana plants, which are high in THC. As, as you know, marijuana will make you high and gives you that psychoactive effect of making you high. Um, so there's cross-pollination between the marijuana plants and the hemp plants. And what that does is it results in a higher THC level um, in the hemp plant. So in order to remove the THC, the CBD needs to be heavily processed. And you don't want to heavily process anything. You want pure, right? So the right CBD supplier is key. And we were finding this over and over and over again with sourcing in the U.S., so, and, and, and Brooke, could I just interject with a question? You mentioned that broad spectrum is the preferred approach, but these these tests that were run to 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 look at THC levels and were, where it was identified that you know uh, most many of those uh, labels were not labeled correctly with respect to the THC. That could even happen with broad spectrum uh, as well, right? So just because you think you're getting broad spectrum, which should be low in THC at least in the study that was performed, doesn't show that it always uh, is, is the case. Uh, is that right? Okay. Yeah, that's exactly right, Roger. Yeah, very good. Part point. of what I think is, is challenging in the space for all of us as pet parents, right? Because you want to, you want to feel good about what you're doing. You want to believe in, in what you're providing. And for some of the reasons Brooke's talking about here, cross pollination, other things, you know, even if companies have good intentions, um, it, it uh, 
the, the CBD world is um, it's more complicated than I think, you know, it's, it appears on the surface. There's a lot uh, to kind of dig in and we appreciate that you've dug in Brooke. So tell us a little bit about the supplier that, that we have identified for our source of CBD as, as one of the ingredients in our CBD product. Um, absolutely. And I just I just want to add one one point. Um, you know, we're talking about this with CBD and, you know, having to process out THC um, if, you know, potentially in, in um, the, the uh, full spectrum. Um, but this is also the same with any any ingredient that you get. OK, not all beef is the same beef. Not all chicken is the same chicken. I mean, we, we have more controls over that because, you know, we've been dealing with that for quite a while, but not everything is the same. That's why we talk about quality a lot because quality is a big deal. And that's the bucket we have to kind of put all this in. But, you know, I just want you guys to feel comfortable that we are doing the homework for you. And you certainly ask questions, hundred percent. But I'm, um, you know, this this took a while to find a great source. And so, what we've done, getting back to who our source is, we source from a, our CBD from a fifth generation family owned hemp farm in Western Europe. And you might say, well, why? Why? Why would you do that? And no, I didn't get to take a trip to Western Europe to to find these people, but. The reason we chose this this particular farm is because they have very stable crops. They've been cultivating this farm for generations, right? And also the agricultural guidelines in Europe are very different from in the US. So for instance, they don't use pesticides or chemicals there. There's no cross pollination of the plants, which results in a more pure oil. There's no heavy processing. We don't want that. To, we don't want to have to heavily process to remove THC. We want as pure, as raw as we can get, right? Um, the CBD that we use is nutritionally dense and naturally low in that THC. No cross-pollination, you know, cultivated, you know, for generations. We're getting that very, very low 0.0% THC. It's also um, certified organic in Europe. Now, this is a different certification than in the US, but it's still meaningful, okay? Um, it's also GMO free and all raw materials are tested as well as the finished product to make sure you're getting what we say you're getting. Um, these are quality products and that, you know, we, that we will give our pets all the benefits of, the, of quality CBD without the psychoactive effects of THC. Your pets will not get high and that is absolutely key. Fantastic. So I want to clarify something and then I've got a question here I'd like to share with you, Brooke, um, uh, which is around the, the question is about, you know, kind of when to use a CBD uh, version versus one of our non-CBD versions of, of products. So, uh, but before we go to that question, um, I wanted to clarify. You know, the, the the source finding a source in Western Europe for the CBD. That's one ingredient among many in the CBD Chillax or the CBD uh, AXA or the CBD Joint Support product. And so, although that ingredient is sourced from Western Europe, the product is still uh, made in the USA and um, and 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 satisfies the need or the claim that we make on all of our products. All of our nutrition products satisfy the made in the USA claim, uh, which is really important to us as well. So we can find wonderful, you know, individual ingredient suppliers to uh, contribute, um, you know, a, a fantastic ingredient. Um, but it's one of many, and by the time you put it all together. Um, it still does satisfy that that need to be made in the USA, which we think is very important. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's a certain percentage that you have to satisfy of all the materials that you make. It's not just that we make it here in a plant in the United States. That 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 doesn't satisfy right. uh, everything. Yeah. So on this topic, you know, uh, Brett asks why or when would you recommend the non-CBD version of the product over the CBD version of the product, or vice versa? 
So um, we created a chart that should be in your back office now that kind of will help to explain that. But for instance, OK, so um, if this is a first time that you're noticing it with your pets, um, you could try either. OK, it depends on you know the severity. If it's truly, truly severe where they are just panting and pacing, you know, let's just use chillax for a moment. OK, they're panting and pacing. It's going to storm and they're just upset and they're drooling. and You just can't get them to calm down. Um, you could try the regular one first if you want to, if, if money is an issue, because there's definitely a cost difference between them. So if, if money's an issue, you could try the, the regular chillax. If, um, someone's a CBD enthusiast, you might want to go right to the regular, you know, the, because you get just so much more in your body, you know, it just supercharges everything in your body. So you're getting a lot of benefit from that CBD. Um, so it, it really just kind of de depends. I mean, um, there's there's many issues. And as I said, there's there's a chart that kind of gives you some guidelines. And I just I don't have that out right now. But for the most part, you, you know, you you may you know, it, it, both obviously work. We've had the non CBD version in our line for over, for over, I guess, for a year and with fabulous reviews. So certainly it works. Um, but they're, you know, the CBD, I like the words that you said, Brooke, supercharged and, um, obviously, uh, you know, it, 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 it CBD is, is expensive. And so, uh, or more expensive, it's, you know, um, you, you get what you pay for and, it, and it's fabulous. So, um, those are good guidelines. I think it's, it's helpful for people to know there's not a, there's not a black and white, right and wrong, right? It's not like, oh, if the, the pet's showing these symptoms, then this one or those symptoms, that one, it's a choice. And uh, we, we want you to have a choice uh, for those who are uh, excited about using CBD or maybe have used it for yourself. Now you've got an option for your pet. And for those who you know are, are, are not, you've got a wonderful option in the non-CBD version as well. So yeah, you know, if, if your pet, if you've tried the non-CBD version, and it's worked, but maybe not completely, and your pet still has some residual, you know, issues, um, try the CBD version, right? There's no risk. You can, you can try whatever you, what you want to try. I will also tell you that I found personally, um, with our chillax, my dogs will eat, eat, they love all of this stuff. Okay. But with the, with the non CBD version of the chillax, when my dog, um, Ginger is in that mode of anxiety, I, if I haven't, Given it to her 30 minutes or an hour or whatever beforehand, I'm not going to get it in her. And, you know, and so she's going to suffer. What I found with the CBD version is if that storm sneaks up on us, um, she actually will take that even in that mode. There's something about it. I'm trying to figure it out because, I, you know, I, there's something about what we are coding and doing with that particular chew that is that they just love. It, it's all of the CBD chews, actually. Wonderful. Well, Brooke, I know we're at the top of the hour. Um, yeah. I would like to ask because it's a it's a broad topic with so much rich information. You've done a wonderful job helping simplify, you know, for us. I think uh, anybody who watches this thirty second or 30, 30 minute segment is uh, is going to feel empowered. I know, you know, I certainly do. This is a a topic that can be a little bit overwhelming, and I think you've really done a great job, you know, simplifying it for us. Um, is there anything else that you feel it would be helpful for us to know before we wrap this live up? Um, yeah, a couple things. I think it's good practice to take the recommended daily dose and administer it twice a day. So split it up and administer it twice a day. So if you're supposed to give two chews, split it up and give one in the morning and one in the evening. Um, and the reason for that is to keep the CBD constantly in their system because CBD is affected by the metabolism. So if it's metabolized and it gets out of their system, it's, it, it doesn't help as much. So splitting, splitting up that dosage is really good. Um, for our CBD supplements, that would apply mostly to the Joint Support Plus because that's an everyday issue as opposed to aches away, which might be used on an as needed basis, right? Um, and you should always start at a lower dose and see how your pet is affected before increasing the dose, okay? Remember our supplements have that multimodal effect that I talked about, which means that we not only use the CBD, but other active ingredients that work synergistically together to help alleviate all of your pet's issues. 
So for the Joint Support Plus CBD, we also include the glucosamine and chondroitin, you know, to promote the thick viscous joint fluid and MSM to manage aches and discomfort and the hemp seed oil and hemp seed powder for their nutrition and the omega-3 fatty acids. So there's, it's not just CBD that you're getting and giving. Okay. You're, you're, you're combining it with many other active ingredients that help with many other things that all together will really um, make your pets feel much better. Really fabulous, Brooke. It really goes back to something I can attest to as the founder of the company that whenever we launch a, a nutritional supplement, we take the approach of this multimodal approach, which you just described beautifully. You know, you could, you know, certainly there's CBD oil available on the market, which is very expensive, but you know, people could buy CBD oil and just give the oil. Um, but what we've done in this product is formulate it with a whole host of ingredients that all work synergistically in that multimodal approach to deliver the best results. And, um, and uh, you've done a great job uh, outlining that. Well, thank you very much. We've had a wonderful um, lunch and learn today with Brooke. Thank you, Brooke, for taking the time. I hope we've empowered more pet parents to make good decisions when it comes to CBD and how you kind of cut through all the noise out there and make the right decision for you and your pet family. Uh, thank you for taking the time and we will see you uh, back next week. We'll have another lunch and learn. I think next week we'll be on Instagram. Yeah, and actually, I think next week we're, we're back on Facebook. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll see you right back here next week. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you.